All right, first, let's have, talk about how to reduce the type one error. What is the type one error for this yellow distribution? Do you recall? Can you tell me what the percentage of time I'm going to make a type one error? It's 5%, right? Can I reduce that? Yes, I can. I can, as the researcher, choose to not have it be 5%. I can choose to maybe make it 1% and have half a percent on either side. All right, so I am going to make a half a percent rejection region on either side so that my overall error rate or my overall alpha is 1%. So let's say this is a half a percent and I'm gonna make this black now just to make it really clear. So notice that this little chunk over here. Now let's do another one for the upper tail. I wanna draw a half a percent. Now notice when I change my type one error rate from 5% to 1%, this is the picture that it was when it was 5%. And now at 1%, see how it's a much smaller chunk? Do you see how it moved my rejection region over here? So now this is my new line for what defines my rejection region. It was over here before, but now I've moved it away. So I have effectively reduced my type one error. That way, if, I, if the blue distribution doesn't exist, I've now reduced the likelihood for me to conclude that it does. But what did I do to my type two error by moving my type one error over? So notice before my alpha was here or my rejection region was here, and now I've reduced my alpha, so I moved my rejection region over here. What have I done to my type two error? Now remember, my type two error was the purple zone. So remember, my purple zone used to be here. Let's make it purple again. Okay. But now look at the difference between the two. My purple zone should actually now be this much larger because I've moved the line over. So this increased chunk happened when I reduced my type two error. So that leads us to one of our first uh, major conclusions is that type two and type one error are inversely related. If you decrease your type one error, you're going to increase your type two error. If you increase your type one error, you will decrease your type two error. So as you change one, you're going to impact the other because the type one error defines this line. And then this line tells us our likelihood of making a type two or type one error. Now remember, you can't make a type one error and a type two error at the same time. The type one error requires that you're saying that in reality, God spoke to us and told us that a vitamin dam does nothing. And if you conclude it does do something, you've made a mistake, a type one error mistake. A type two error says, God tells us, ah, there is a difference between the two that dam consumers do get smarter and type two error is the chance that you say, oh, but I found that that didn't. I made the mistake and concluded that vitamin dam consumers are no different from everyone else, but in fact, they really are. But because we don't know what the reality is, we don't know necessarily whether we've made a type one error or whether we appropriately said there was a blue distribution or whether we've made a type two error or appropriately concluded there is no difference. All we can do is reduce one or the two of the errors um, the likelihood of them happening. So we just talked about reducing the type one error. That was pretty easy. We just made it smaller. Now let's talk about the complicated things we can do to reduce type two error. And I'm gonna um, have that in another video so that we don't overwhelm you too much.